Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Sunday morning service here at Elam. And, of course, today is all Lola's dedication. Um, we do apologize for the late start, but uh, Lola wasn't here. <laughs> she was too busy making herself look fabulous. So um, welcome, Lily, and welcome, Chris, as well. Uh, and girls, uh, we hope we uh, do our best today in honoring you in the life of this special little girl. Special welcome if you are here for the first time, whether you go to another church or go to no church, we welcome you. Um, we hope you enjoy your time with us this morning, and we hope something of the God we know and worship is communicated to you today. I'm Andy, I'm the minister here, and um, we're going to have a fairly short service. We're going to sing a couple of songs, we're going to do the dedication. I'll share something brief from the Bible, and then after that we can have a cup of tea and some biscuits. Um, there is an overflow room upstairs where the, the service will be getting streamed to a television. So if you have little ones and they're not going to want to sit down here, you can take them up there. There'll be some toys up there and you can sit and watch everything from up there. Uh, but it's unsupervised, it's unstewarded. So one parent would have to go with their own children if that's okay. Um, but that's fairly easy. If you do need to take them up the stairs or just out there at the front. Good, good. Let me just read something from the letter of Colossians before we go into a time of praise and worship. 1 Colossians verse 13. God has delivered us from the, the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son, Jesus Christ, in whom we have redemption for the forgiveness of sins. The image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him, and all things were created for him. And he is before things. In him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, his church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. Him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile himself all things, whether on heaven or in the earth, by making peace with us by the blood of the cross. Amen. Please stand to your feet and we'll just go into a time of praise and worship. God, we thank you, Lord, for our lives this morning. We thank you especially for the life of little Lola and our parents who have come here to dedicate her this morning. Lord, we just pray that you speak to us this morning, show us something of who you are, God, in a personal way for each of us and in a powerful way for each of us. In Jesus' name, amen.
worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain, oh God. You have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus. share very quickly something from the Bible which I hope will encourage you as much as it encourages me. If you do have a Bible with you, if you'd like to t turn to Psalm 103, if you uh, don't have a Bible, you feel free, free to borrow one for the back, or if you don't own a Bible, please feel free to take one of those as a gift if you choose Psalm 103, and we'll start at verse 11. Are you sitting there? It's fine. I'm just checking, I'm not, I'm not telling you all, I'm just checking. Um, Psalm 103, verse 11. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. And as, as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. And we'll stop there. We, we live in a very um, scientific age nowadays, don't we? We, we live in a, an information age. We like to know stuff about stuff. 
we like things to be quantifiable, we like things to be measurable. Um, everything's got a Wikipedia page now, doesn't it? Uh, you know, even Wikipedia has its own Wikipedia page, in case you want to go and read up on Wikipedia. We're the, we're the textbook generation. We like everything explained. We like everything broken down. Uh, we know now that you know how high Mount Everest is in millimeters. We never used to know that. We know the speed of light. We we like to know how fast our broadband is working. We like to know how long dinner is going to take to cook to, to the minute. Dads, we like to know what the thermostat is set at in the house. We like everything to be quantifiable and measurable and set just right. We like to know that we know how things are. But what I love about the verse that we just read is that when trying to describe certain attributes of God's character, the psalmist, the, the person who's, who's writing this, employs what I can only describe as immeasurable examples. He deliberately goes out of his way to compare elements of God's character with things that would have no calculable comparison to them. Uh, let me just take a couple of minutes and, and look at what the psalmist is trying to say here about God. The first verse we read, the first thing he is trying to explain is the love of God. And, and that's an important thing, isn't it? Does God love? Can God love? I went on Google the other day and typed in, does God? And I just allowed Google to fill in the rest of the sentence. And the first thing that came up, the most searched for thing, was quite understandably, does God exist? Which, which is a pretty important question. But the number two most searched question right after that was, God, does God love me? I thought that was quite interesting that that's what people are searching for in the internet. But of course, why not? Because, because if you personally come to the conclusion that God does exist, the next reasonable thing you really need to be asking yourself, well, if God exists, what does he think about me? If he's going to be my judge, then I want to know what he thinks about me. Does he care about me? Does he love me? And who knows, maybe those are questions that you have even asked yourself some nights. I often find that when you're lying in bed late at night and the, the noise of your life starts to go a little bit quiet, that you actually start asking yourself these bigger questions. Thankfully, the Bible and the verse that I just read tries to answer some of these questions for us. The psalmist wrote, as we've read, for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. The psalmist here is describing God's love as being so massive, as being so great, that it is as if it is as high as the heavens are above the earth. In other words, who can really measure it? Who can measure how great and how much God loves us? And you can almost imagine the psalmist sitting there with his, with his scroll and his pen 3,000 years ago, looking up at the stars, lost in wonder at how far away they must all be, wondering to himself, that must be how much God loves me. It's so vast. As high as the heavens are, Above the earth, so great is his love. The second verse that we read, and the next thing he tries to address, is how far God removes sin from us. And, and this is, again, particularly important for anyone who's ever done anything bad in their lives. He says, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. And... What I kind of love about this wee statement that he makes, it's maybe a wee bit nerdy, but there's a difference between measuring the, di the distance between north and south and east and west. I love that he says east and west and not north and south because, because we can measure the distance between north and south because those are 
places. Those are set places. The earth has a magnetic north and it has a magnetic south. North and south are destinations, but east and west aren't. East and west are endless directions. If you get in a plane and fly north, you will only fly north for so long before you end up going south. If you get in a plane with unlimited fuel and fly east, set autopilot to east, you'll just keep on going east. It just keeps on going. And the psalmist here is saying, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. And I believe what he's saying is here is that God is able to remove our guilt and to separate it from us to such an extent that the distance between us and it would be immeasurable. It is not a partial forgiveness that God offers. It is not a temporary truce between us and him. It is a complete and utter separation between us and the sin that separates us from him. The only thing in our life that separates us from God, the Bible teaches, is sin. That's the thing that's between us. But the gospel message has always been clear on one thing, that through Jesus and through what he did on the cross, that that sin can be forgiven and we can find freedom from it. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Amen. And the final thing that the psalmist addresses here is the compassion of God. Is God compassionate towards us? Is God angry with us? Is he short-tempered? Is he cruel and malicious or is he compassionate is he merciful and the example the psalmist gives here is that of a comparison with a as a father has compassion on his children so too does the lord have compassion scripture compares god's compassion for us with a parent's compassion for their child a dad and their child i mean Let's think about Chris for a moment. Sorry to put you in the spot. Um, let's just think about Chris's compassion. Chris has just survived living in lockdown, working from home with three daughters. I mean, let's just forget about Lola for a minute. I, I think, Chris, you really deserve a medal, to be honest. I wonder if during that time you had to exercise some compassion and not just sending them away to boarding school halfway through the lockdown. This close. <laughs> Had to exercise some mercy. We salute you. I'm the, I'm the same. Sometimes Elsie drives me to the utter edge of madness. Sometimes it's three in the morning. She's still not asleep. I'm going in. I'm trying to settle her. She relaxes. She waits until I relax. And then she sticks her finger right in my eye. <laughs> and she loves it. In moments like that, it can be real tempting to just send her away. To just send her to the grandparents and live in a different house from her for a little while. But all it often takes is for her to say something cute. Or to give me those sad, kind eyes that she does. And, and you know what? It's all forgiven. It's all forgotten. Because there is a bottomless well of compassion that parents seem to have for their children, which means they will put up with almost anything. And the scriptures tell us the same way that a father has compassion for his child, so too does God have compassion. For us, it's a compassion that overlooks our mistakes and our failures and our shortcomings. It's a compassion that overrules everything else and says that no matter who we are or what we've done, if we ask him, 
he'll be there and he'll pick us up and he'll put up with us a little bit longer. So if, like me, you do ever lie awake in bed at night wondering, does God really love me? Has God really forgiven me? Will God have compassion on me despite all the rubbish that I know goes on in here sometimes? Remember that the answer to all three of those according to Scripture is an immeasurable, resounding, and enduring yes. Yes, he will. And yes, he does. Amen. Let me just pray for you. Lord, we thank you for your word to us today that we've heard. We thank you for this scripture that speaks of you. And we thank you, Lord, that through the Bible and through personal experience, we, we have come to know you as a God who loves, as a God who forgives, and as a God who extends endless compassion. And I pray, Lord, for anyone who is here today, God, who may not know you, who may be asking questions about you, who may be seeking you, God. I pray that your love, your forgiveness, your compassion would be known to them, God, in the way that they need it to be made known. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We will now move to the dedication part. Breath, girls, you ready to come up? Have you remembered your lines and the dance moves? Your mummy taught you the dance moves? Oh, this could get messy then. Uh, please just give um, Lily and Chris a bit of a round of applause as they come up. <laughs> You coming up, girls? Your mummy didn't buy those dresses so you can sit in the chairs all day. Good, don't you look lovely? <laughs> you happy, Lola? She's happy. Good, no meltdowns. Good, good. <laughs> Let me read something from Deuteronomy chapter 6. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You should love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts and you should impress them on your children. Talk about them to your children when you're sitting at home or when you're walking along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Chris and Lily are here today because they are following through on this command to raise Lola in the way that would direct her life towards God, a life of goodness and godliness. Today they are dedicating her and committing to do their best to raise her in a way that is deep. And we are also asking all of you here today, as friends, as family members, as church Christian brothers and sisters, and particularly those who have the honor of being called godparents, we are asking you today, to stand with them, to make your commitments to help them raise Lola in the way that they want to. There's an old saying that it takes a village to raise a child, and, and those of you who have been invited here today especially, you are their village, and we are asking you for your help. At this point, I'm going to give you guys some commitments, and then at the end, if you would just like to accept those commitments by saying, we will. And then I'm going to ask you guys some commitments in line with what I've just explained. And at the end, I would like you to agree to these commitments by standing to your feet. Now, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll give some sort of indication about when the right time is. And if not, just look for that one confident person who boldly stands up. But for the next few minutes, if no one could get up to go to the toilet, because <laughs> you might just start a bit of a... Mexican wave scenario. Chris and Lily, in presenting this child to the Lord, do you promise independence and divine grace and in partnership to church to teach her the truths and duties of the Christian faith and by prayer and by teaching and by your example to bring her up in the discipline and the instruction of the Lord? 
Thank you. And do you, as the members of this church, the friends, the family, and the godparents, acknowledge and accept the responsibility together with the parents of teaching and training this child so that being brought up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord, she may be led in due time to Christ as her own saviour and be made a member of his church. If so, will you please signify your acceptance of this charge by standing to your feet? Hallelujah. Let me just pray. Lord, we thank you for the life of Lola Celine. We thank you for her safe birth. We thank you for her health and her safety. And we commit her into your care. Lord, we thank you for the beautiful lives of our sisters, Lexi and Lucy. And we pray that the freedom we'll always share together in the bonds of love and joy. God, we thank you for her mum and dad, Chris and Lily. We thank you for their strong marriage, for their love for one another, and for their determination to raise Lola in goodness and godliness. And God, we pray that you would strengthen them as they seek to raise her. We pray that you would give them wisdom as they seek to guide her. And we pray, God, that you would always prosper them so that they will always be able to provide for her. And to you, Lola, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may he turn his face towards you and give you peace. Now and always. Amen. Amen. Can we get a round of applause for this family, please, and for little Lola? We've just got a little gift for her. Would one of you like to take that and make sure your little sister gets it when she's old enough to read? <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, the family have requested a song, uh, a song of uh, meditation, a song of ministry, but just something that reflects their heart for Lola. So um, if you guys would like to sit down, thank you. And uh, if you would all like to sit down, and our music team are just going to perform for us something that reflects the heart of the parents today. Thank you.
was a lovely choice. Is that off your soundtrack, Chris? Is that one of your... <laughs> is that your jam? Thank you so much. Um, at this stage, I, I do just want to offer um, the parents an opportunity, uh, if there's anything you want to say, um, or do you want me to pass on uh, the kind of messages we discussed, Lily? That's fine, it's fine. Um, but we were talking, and Lily and Chris are very grateful for everyone who has come today to support them, to support Lola, and, and they are obviously very thrilled at her little life, her safe delivery, and, and particularly during the, the, the year that we have, we've all had. Um, so um, we graciously receive your, your thank yous. Um, that brings us to the end. There are some refreshments They're going to be at the back. I suggest if, if you're wanting to take pictures and pictures with the family or pictures with the kids and stuff like that, maybe do that down here at the front and then tea drinkers can come to the back and photo people can come to the front and that might be a good way to, to sort of manage it. Um, we do have a, an offering box for those of you in the church who, who come usually to tithe and of course if you want to make a donation to anything this morning, you're, you're very welcome to do so but you're under no obligation. And if you have any questions about anything we have done this morning or anything we did, please feel free just to nab me and I'll be happy to chat through anything you want to know about the church or anything I've said. But without any further ado, one last time, let's just give little Lola a, a round of applause. Thank you so much. Everyone be safe. God bless. And uh, if you have the time, please do join us for some refreshments at the back.